In this video, I will teach you how to avoid monolithic files and spaghetti code by bringing some easy to maintain structure for your projects. Hey there, I'm Lemon and I wish I had this advice when I was starting out making my own projects. By following the structure, I've been able to easily add collaborators to my projects and make sure it is at least maintainable in the long term. That is, there is some sort of pattern in how things work. Let's get right into it. The first step is to always maintain GitHub repositories for your projects. There are three main advantages that this provides. First is that your code is always backed up. This is always a lifesaver and a nice to have. Do not skip this. Next, it is really easy to track your changes and roll back code if necessary. This will allow you to experiment. You can create different branches. And this, in general, is really helpful to test out new features in your code. And thirdly, GitHub provides a really easy way to add collaborators to your projects. So if you want others contributing to your projects, it will become really easy. Either you can add them as a collaborator or you can ask them to open a pull request. Coming to actually structuring your programming projects, first off, I would say read up on the principles of MVC and other software design patterns. There are so many different patterns out there and each framework has its own recommended architectures and opinionated architectures, I would recommend reading up about them when you're getting into them. In general, for my full stack Python projects, this is the architecture that I follow. My architecture is inspired from something called as the block architecture that I've used in Flutter. I use that to structure my projects. So a high level view of how I structure my folders is that there is the entry point that is the app.py or main.py file. And then there are different folders. One is the front-end folder in which all my front-end goes, all my front-end related logic, everything to display the actual UI to the user that goes in my front-end. Then there's a logic folder in which all my business logic goes. This is the only module which connects the front-end to the back-end. This sort of acts as an intermediary and handles all of the errors that can arise from the back-end and translates them into beautiful error messages that you can present to users on your front-end. And then there's the actual data or repository folder in which all of the core back-end functions live. This is where all the CRUD operations takes place. This is where I actually interact with my database. If you want to see this architecture in action, I recommend you watch my previous video in which I've explained how to use Python yield. In that, I've used the architecture that I'm talking about right now. I've split my directories as I've mentioned right now, and it's a pretty small to-do project, but that will give you a great idea on how you can implement this architecture for your projects. Now third, let's say you're writing a purely backend oriented project in Python, then the easiest way to maintain your project is to split up your folders into different modules. Perhaps make each feature a separate module, keep them in a separate directory, and treat them as their own separate modules. This way you can easily make them interact with each other and you can import them easily outside of their core modules. Now the fourth point in planning and structuring your programming project is just use a proper IDE slash code editor. I recommend VS Code because although it is a code editor, it is basically an IDE because of all the rich extensions that are present. I recommend using Visual Studio Code whether the project is large or small. If you're a beginner, I would recommend starting to get used to VS Code. Now last but not least, and this is the most important point, you need to learn by doing. I ended up deciding on the block architecture and implementing something similar to the block architecture in my Python projects after tons of trial and error. I learned block architecture when I was working with Flutter. Previous to that, I was trying MVC, I was trying so many different architectures, but this is what clicked with me and this is what I use and this is what I recommend others use, but this does not like with everybody, not everybody vibes with this. So I would recommend you go out there, explore different frameworks, explore different architectures and try to come up with your own something that is understandable for your projects. I upload videos like this every week. If you enjoy this video, make sure to like, subscribe and share. I'll see you in the next one.